Hi, good afternoon to everybody. So we're working in this 2017 Hyundai Ioniq. Hi. So we're here in the customer's house because vehicle sadly got flooded. So I want to share with you what is the real condition that happens? What are the symptoms when you, of course, flood this type of vehicle? It was not completely flood. We're talking about probably 50 centimeters. Okay, we gotta make that calculation in inches. But one thing for sure, the high voltage battery suffered. So let me just quickly share with you. Let's see what gets flood and what is the real damage that happened. We can also see that the 12 volt battery suffer pretty much it's completely dead but there's sadly there's a connection between the high voltage battery and the total battery okay which connection is this just stick around and we will continue then Okay, first of all, what we did, we immediately saw that we have a fully corroded 12-volt uh, battery connection right here. As you can clearly see, everything's fully corroded. But then, let me show you the level of flood, which is exactly right here. So if you mark it over here, probably three-fourths of the tire. But if we compare this, height it is right here this level telling us that the high voltage battery completely flooded but then if you realize that we have a chassis ground connection and you know what this is a 12 volt battery direct connection from the 12 volt to this um, this is a some sort of junction connection, okay, to the rest of the DC to DC converter. Mm, that is really telling us that if the high voltage battery gets flooded, okay, the 12 volt battery through this cable over here, it's going to flood as well. It's going to short the 12 volt battery. So this is just uh, a recovery. What we're gonna do over here, I'm, I'm going to take out the high voltage battery. I'm gonna take it to the lab. I'm gonna fully take it apart. And let's see the consequence of flooding the high voltage battery, okay? There are some, probably some many other modules inside the center dash, uh, probably the airbag. I don't know, I, I'm, I will need to in, inspect that but later. But in the meantime, first of all, it's the high voltage battery that we need to check out. So let me just, there's nothing we can do. We gotta take it out. We can clearly see the level of flood right here we clearly see the marks all the batteries so i really hope the battery management computer didn't suffer but but of course we have to remember that this battery has one connection per cell to the battery management unit so usually those connections when it gets shorter they corrode very much and that's what we need to uh, inspect as well as the high voltage battery cooling fan which is an open board that if it gets shorted, it can suffer as well. So this is just a complete disassemble of the high voltage battery. Take it apart in the lap and we will continue that. All right, so here's the situation. We already took out the high voltage battery and you can see clearly everything over here flooded. Uh, look at all those marks of corrosion very much. Uh, because they didn't disconnect the service plug okay uh, apparently the high voltage outlet they seem good obviously because the vehicle was not running but then this one this is the positive 12 volt coming directly from the battery and that's the reason why the 12 volt battery got flooded as well not from the battery not at that level it's because the positive cable this positive cable connects directly to this one and this one is the one who goes to the DC to DC converter and accessories but because it was at this level corrosion got over here and short the 12 volt battery so we're gonna have to check this K 
cable until the to the inverter to check it out okay the main connection communication lines i'm gonna have to inspect this because this is 12 volt as well can you see it's power so let's hope this is fine but anyway and then finally we have the high voltage battery out but as i said it's just a recovery because this is it was completely flooded so anyway let me just take it to the lab let's just take it apart and we'll see what happened here all right so we brought the battery to the lab and as you can see clearly the mark of where the flooding guts the battery hi again well we can call this a corpse of a hybrid battery but the reason is that I want to share with you guys I'm going to take apart this battery step by step and show you exactly what happens to a hybrid battery when you completely flood it of course we know that the battery is going to short because the water is conducted of course everybody knows that but we want to see exactly all the components that go bad cables junction block sensor pressure sensors everything so let's let's fully take it apart and let's see what happens when you flood a high voltage battery we will continue then. okay once again let's make a quick inspection okay we can clearly see the corrosion between both terminals the interlock not looking so bad okay I'm a little concerned about the cooling fan because the cooling fan has a open as an open uh, electrical board so we're gonna take it apart anyway but this is the level where the water reach it okay let's see the main connection for communications and power of the low voltage system oh boy i hope they survive but anyway now look at the junction block look at the mark right here so this was the level where she reached okay we see a lot of corrosion well the corrosion comes because remember the water is conducting and there's high voltage electricity over here and then of course it begins to short and damage will come oh, okay first bad symptom that's the main let me see the main positive from the battery completely the cable is completely corroded and destroyed anyway let me open it up okay so just by unscrewing one two and three nuts uh, taking off the current sensor connection over here and the relays controllers over here from low voltage I can take these out I managed to take off the bolt from the positive it gave me a little time but it's good it came out and the negative not so it was fine but because it was not so much flooded and then we can take out the power relay, relay assembly let me see here we go here we go here we go, here we go. Give me a second oh sorry there it is all right so the power relay assembly is out we are going to take it apart as well oh the positive contact is bad and then we have direct access to the cells completely corroded as i said this is an autopsy okay we're not going to do anything with this battery at all so let's keep undressing the battery we'll continue so we continue on dressing the high voltage battery all right and we have the high voltage battery management unit okay i'm gonna take out all these connections to see well this is low voltage should be fine but okay let me see it's fine because water re didn't reach this level this one is the one that concerns me a little bit, the high voltage. You see? Oh, not looking bad at all. You see? 
Ooh, it's fine. Great news. Let me see the pressure sensor over here. I'm gonna take, I need a tool to take this out. All right, let me just take this out. We'll continue then. But I'm very glad this didn't suffer. Okay, let's undress the, this is the front part of the battery. Okay, so we can see the passive balancers. Oh, yes. Completely short and burn, and even burn. So because they make direct contact, once it's short inside the water, it shorts between the cells and begins to burn as hell. Oh, okay. This one still corroded. All right. So I'm gonna take one, two, three, and the four uh, balancer, passive balancer modules, okay? As well as the connections from the balancers to the uh, management unit. But what I can see is that the part coming from the, uh, directly from the cells is the part that gets burned, not so much the part going to the management unit. And that is a good thing. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna have to take this all this connection out and we will continue then. Once unplug everything, take them out of their, their connection. This is the wiring that coming from the passive balancer to the management unit. Of course, they're extremely corroded. This connection is, uh, you know, definitely not usable anymore but it didn't suffer that much at least the, the top part it's fine but then now we have the connection directly to the cells and there is where problem comes i'm very curious to see when and i'm still going to open this unit inside because that's the one that really uh shorts okay so let me just take them out uh, i need both my hands so we will continue then. let me just disconnect first of all the Let's show you. I need to disconnect the bus bars. Okay. Let's see. Alright. The main positive. Let me just take them out. Alright, we will continue. Okay, so from this line over here to the positive main connection, I just took out the cable. That of course this cable is not usable anymore. <laughs> it's completely gone. Alright. I also managed to take to disconnect the passive balancer. It gave me a lot of work because look, completely destroyed. That's because this once the cells once again they 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 come in short, it's gonna begin to overheat and burn them themselves. However, the connection, as you can see, totally burning. I'm still gonna open this, but not now. We'll open it later. I'm gonna disconnect this one, take this out, take this out, disconnect, take this out, disconnect, and we will continue then. Okay, so the control wiring, okay, take out all the pins, all the pins from here, the connection to the safety plug, low voltage controller, this can comes out. So this one is for the main communication from the computer and the rest of the vehicle. Apparently it's the main connection is just corroded, but the other side is fine. Okay. Now, of course, this cannot be used anymore because the main communication lines are destroyed for corrosion. The main connection of the cooling fan looking good. Okay. These are the two main cables that enter this center boss bar over here. Okay. That goes to the safety plug connection this one is fine didn't suffer cables seem to be good very nice actually all right so i can just take this out 10 millimeter bolt and coming out let me take out the cooling fan and let's continue then okay so after taking apart this taking out this 10 millimeter nut i can take out the complete 
the service plug cable the connection I already took out the cooling fan that goes in this position okay so I have full access to the cells see them all open and destroyed because they were shorted of course I'm gonna try to open one of those stacks anyway but then I have the cooling fan over here that from the outside is looking fine but the problem is that the cooling fan has an open circuit board there and as you can see corrosion got into it oh boy high voltage battery autopsy so if you're liking all this content hit that red button over there like and subscribe remember you gotta support the channel it's a very interesting case however it really hurts it really hurts me that this happened because you know it's a very expensive vehicle uh, these batteries are expensive so we're still trying to search uh, a brand new one uh, for the customer um, because of course we're gonna have to replace it this this is not usable anymore okay this is just once again an autopsy okay for educational purposes that high resolution diagnostics is sharing with you so we will continue let me keep scrapping out this uh, battery because I want to take out one stack and open it and let's see what happened to the cells we will continue then. okay so the safety pressure sensor over here I just took it out and look the cells didn't swell they didn't swell and it didn't trigger the sensor it should be in this position but it's fine so we can save this part anyway we will continue then I found something very interesting so I'm taking out the management unit we're gonna put it over here we will open it later but look the first stack did swell and it's very hard indeed like, like compared to the other ones I'm not sure if from the camera's perspective you can see it but this is clearly swollen compared to the one you see this one didn't swell this one didn't swell and this one didn't swell however they all got shorted equally okay so let's take out the battery skin frame and let's take out those stacks we will continue then okay so we're gonna take out this the back side panel oh! <laughs> okay. I don't want to imagine how much level of bubbling electricity was flowing to this during the shortage but as far as I can see the one the stack that suffer as hell is the number one as you can clearly see it's still difficult to see but this one is swollen the other ones are not but the most of the uh, corrosion and swelling and short coming from this the first stack the other ones are, of course they're still bad and they're still corroded but they didn't suffer so much as the first one so okay i'm gonna take out this is the temperature sensor cable i'm gonna take it out and almost ready to take out the cell stacks four block one two three four all right we will continue then so i already took out the the main frame long bolts okay i have them all here and this upper frame can go out now and that's it Give me a second. Okay, we have discovered all the stacks. I need to cut this to separate them. Look, look. And then I have to take out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the other side as well. That holds the cell blocks before taking them out. The temperature sensors, I can't take them out because I have to take out the. Uh, blocks from the unit okay but I was just trying to open it up to see the condition inside whoo and not looking good at all but we're still gonna open it you know <laughs> so let's continue then blocks are free now but we, before we took them out I took out the temperature sensor now this one works a little different it only has three temperature sensors the inlet that goes right here the oh sorry the first stack has a temperature sensor and the outlet the last cell block has the last temperature sensor that of course they seem to be corroded but 
hopefully they didn't suffer but yet still <laughs> bye bye with you <laughs> okay now it's time to take these out okay so yeah right of course I'm gonna have to clean all this for sure and take out all the level of corrosion before um, opening any of the stacks of course the stack I'm gonna open is this one the one that's swollen okay so let's continue then all right everything is <laughs> taken up I already blew up took out all the remaining waters over here okay I clean all the cables already okay so I have over here the these two passive balancers I'm gonna take apart one and in the meantime I already opened the cooling fan to check it out inside and it looks a little corroded and of course oxidate oxidate the uh, well in this case the rotors the rotor it's the one on the outside <laughs> this is the motor on the contrary but the bearings are making a little noise so yes of course it was flooded okay as you can clearly see so I'm just going to assemble it back lubricated of course this won't work anymore okay as I said this is just an autopsy okay and then once I assemble this I'm gonna continue to open those okay we will continue then okay the cooling fan is assembled and it's back okay so we can we can put that away all right of course this is a replaceable part okay and the passive balancer I took it apart and the good thing is that she look it inside very nice because it's completely sealed with this uh, some sort of a silicone cover the connection looks a little rusty the ones that shorted as you can clearly see there's no connection between pin one and two as well as this one I already cleaned them uh, I see a tiny little bubble a little burning inside these two connections but it's really difficult to say if by chance uh, the board might have suffered inside okay so probably this is the one who saves uh, these well all of them, actually it's four of these probably these units are the one who saved the uh, management unit because it needs to pass through these resistors and then read the voltage in the management unit which it is a very nice thing because on the contrary if this wouldn't happen but this inside the board this computer will be completely gone all right okay so i'm gonna assemble this back all right this goes right at this position let's see that's it i'm just gonna put it back and let's continue taking apart the blocks all right we will continue then okay so we chose uh block number one which is the one that's I consider the worst. So we're just taking out the side covers and we're gonna take out these two brackets to open the cell. So let's continue then. Okay, so we open the cell and we can clearly see how much swollen compared to the other one that are, these are flat, but this one's the one that suffered the most. So here you got a little perspective of the cells. Here we got two cells right there, completely swollen. And this one is supposed to be right at this level <laughs> all right <laughs> okay of course this is not a serviceable component everything over here is welded okay so this comes as a complete unit just as you can see right here okay so my point is that this one is the one that suffer a lot but i want to check if by chance how much voltage this is giving me a second right a second let me see sorry <laughs> still has a little voltage so obviously this is supposed to be uh, around 56 to 60 volts all right nominal each one and has half so it's completely gone so when you deep discharge a lithium battery in this case it will of course lose its capacity and swell and that's it bye bye how do you guys consider in this autopsy of this Hyundai Ionic the one last component that we have to uh, take apart is the 
orally assembly, the John Shub look. Let's just quickly open it and let's have a little perspective of how it looks inside after um, flooding. And let's make a test if by chance these contactors are still working. So we will continue that. Okay, so I'm just going to assemble back uh, the battery. We already checked the, uh, the stacks. Of course, we're gonna have to get them all. But in order to assemble back, as you can see, all these stacks are very swollen. So I had to take out the cell number one, actually. There's actually two cells over here, as you can see. Otherwise, I won't be able to close this uh, block anymore. So uh, I am able to close it and assemble back the battery. So what we're going to do, probably we're just going to keep these batteries for school purposes. Okay. As a demonstration, you know, for... Um, assembling and disassembling but in the meantime i have to talk to the customer and let her know that of course well i already told her that this was a corpse but this demonstration is actually very important for you to understand the dangers that happen when you flood a hybrid and electric vehicle especially these hybrids the batteries are not sealed so of course they're gonna suffer and oxidate and of course damage the cells okay Oh, we're almost done. We'll continue. Look at this very interesting. Even with one cell, well, two cells out, she's still swollen and giving me a little pressure to assemble it back. <laughs> I'm not going to take out the other cells, of course, because uh, we'll just make a little pressure and that should be it. But just the level of damage that these poor cells got. Hmm. So how much is a high voltage battery from Hyundai Ionic? I still don't know, but it's some money. Uh, I'm gonna have to go to the dealer to find out. Uh, there's other options that you can also uh, assemble. I use one, as long as it's in good condition, it should be fine, okay? So, we will continue that. Mm, so, before we assemble, okay, the, all the stacks are ready to assemble back let's check out these cells right away okay so as i said we have these one single pack that has two connected in series two i'm sorry two cells connected in series okay and let's see we have uh, it says lithium ion okay cells 6.5 amp hours at 3.75 volts okay to give you 24.4 watt hour so indeed, it is a strong cell. All right, let's measure the voltage now. Holy cow, really nothing. Check the other cell. Check the other cell. Give me a moment. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Remember that I'm working with just one hand. Holy cow! Nothing. No voltage at all. Really? <laughs> Obviously, because the cells are. Uh, they were completely flooded and short circuit they die completely die but some of the cells inside the stack have a has a little voltage to create uh, those 30 something uh, volts but these two the one of the most swollen one zero totally gone <laughs> okay we will continue we're almost done one of the final components that i have here is the service plug grip that well the interlock it's fine the fuse looks good, but we're gonna test it right away, okay? By just doing a quick measurement. Between one pole and another, see? All right, bye. Customer leaving. It's fine. Well, apparently, even flooding a high voltage battery, shorting it in water, 
it doesn't burn out the uh, this is a surface plug grip but it has the uh, high voltage fuse inside which it says uh, for it's made for 450 DC volts at 150 and 125 amps whoa, whoa. sorry uh, here it is all right so this is the main fuse for the ionic so it's fine it didn't suffer that's a good thing so we're gonna assemble it back again we're gonna assemble all this battery completely and in conclusion obviously nobody is ever gonna flood a vehicle again but always necessarily precautions must be taken because flooding a voltage battery it's a lot of money okay so we have one single component to take apart which is the um, high voltage battery fuse the power power relay assembly okay so we will continue it. the last component the power relay assembly which still has water by the way oh boy yeah all this contacts completely shorted right here but then we have we have to take out these boss bars to open up the bottom cover and uh, let's see what finally happened okay well we will continue you know what taking all these components out here's the current sensor by the way okay taking all these components out i think i realized how come these power relays melt so much it's because these boss bars go out very very fast i was just barely pulling them and they coming out like for example i used to take out the ones from the toyota and the toyota are very very tight so you know if you have a slack connection it will create resistance and especially this one this one as well that creates that high level of current flows over here so let's take out this final cover okay and these are the main boss bars that activates each one of the contactors all right it has one single one two three ground common ground one signal one signal and one signal okay but what i want to do is i want to activate the relay to see if they still work <laughs> and measure the resistance between right here i'm, I'm sorry this one. measure the resistance of the pre-charged resistor but the, ah look this all still has a lot of water but anyway i'm gonna take it out We'll continue all right so we have one of the relays over here i'm gonna open this relay and look at over here these marks of carbon just how much current you see what's happening over here when this was shorted on the under the water oh, very tough hmm. all right let me open the relay all right so look i'm just going to apply low voltage to see if this relay activates all right well apparently it's working pretty sure you can hear the noise right that means it's working which is good but still flooded <laughs> all right we will continue now just measuring voltage i'm sorry measuring if it works for sure It's working. <laughs> so we will continue. All right. So I have over here. This one is the negative contactor. So I, how do I know that? Well, because look at the main one of the main plugs. It's all black, right? Compared to the positive one. Look, comparing the marks that this one is always darker because this one's the, this is the one that goes bad always the mega the main negative contactor which of course i'm gonna test it as well but you saw how we test this uh, uh contactor so it's fully taken apart i'm just going to finish to measure everything and assemble back the battery <laughs> and that's it guys it's time to get a brand new battery for this ionic which is was 
completely flooded so once again if you're liking this content this was a great autopsy and of course another tutorial deep diving into the high voltage battery of the Hyundai Ioniq we have a video about that as well but in this case we just wanted to see the consequences when the battery gets flooded okay so we will leave the video until now uh, once we get the battery and uh, we begin to assemble the vehicle we need to do some more checks before uh, starting back the vehicle I will be posting you guys in our social media we'll re oh by the way I forgot to tell you we have an active TikTok now which is hybrid solution diagnostic with no S okay just follow our TikTok follow our Facebook page hybrid solution diagnostic and follow our Instagram for direct messaging if you have any consultant that you might want to do if you want to know information about the online course okay uh, basically that should be everything for today I'm just going to assemble back the battery um, probably I will do a time lapse assembling it but that's it guys thank you so much for watching I'll see you guys in the very next episode bye bye